Well, my dream is to eradicate it, and to do that you have to eradicate feline coronavirus. Um, and that's pretty difficult because um, it's a very contagious virus, and it's shed in the faeces, and um, it persists in the environment for up to seven weeks in the, in the house, because cats would normally go outside to, to defecate, and the virus would only last a few days. So in a way it's almost a man-made disease because we've brought cats in, we've kept more of them together and the cats are being exposed to enormous amounts of the virus. So it's, the difficulty is less a scientific one and more a psychological one of almost getting people to change what they do and that's a challenge. It's worldwide now, except that we've just uh, had a paper accepted by the Journal of Feline Medicine and Surgery that's not in the Falkland Islands. <laughs> so okay. my plans for world eradication have begun. <laughs> um, the, the vets on the Falkland Islands uh, insisted on quarantine. They insisted that any new cat coming to the Falkland Islands would have to be coronavirus antibody negative. So one of my goals has been um, working on good antibody tests. There are plenty of good antibody tests out there. Um, and um, the next challenge is getting a cat litter that would stop um, transmission. So I've, I've been looking at that. And the third thing would be to find something that would stop cats shedding the virus because they shed it for months. Um, tried four things so far without success. I'm very keen on the algorithm uh, that we put in for FIP diagnosis because um, people come to me asking for FIP treatment and I find that in around 80%, four cats out of five don't actually have FIP. So if you give them FIP treatment, you'll make them worse. If you get the diagnosis right, you have a chance of getting the treatment that works. So for me, the algorithm is the most important part of the guideline.